A big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to show you how you can make the perfect schnitzel at home. Do you know that feeling where you're going on a skiing trip or a winter holiday? To us, mostly, it means we go to the southern part of Germany or to Austria or Schweiz, Switzerland. That, that's the place where they keep the gold. Anyways, do you know that feeling where you go on that trip and halfway through you're getting hungry and you want something to eat and you stop at this place and you go in and you see the schnitzel on the menu and you dare to order it. I'm gonna give you that experience at home. I was reading up on schnitzels and there's this one thing that shocks me when I discovered that the schnitzels, they don't come from Austria. It appears that the true origin of the schnitzel is from Venice. Venice. This is like one of those videos, you were this many years old when you discovered schnitzels are not from Austria. It's like seeing, it's like seeing your grandma naked. You don't want to see it and you can never unsee it. I'm so angry right now that I decided I'm going to make the best schnitzel ever. And to accomplish this, I ordered a top round from veal. And this is a beautiful piece of meat. It is very lean, at the same time it's a little bit tough. And that's exactly what we need, because we need something to hold together while we abuse it, beat it, and make it flat. First step is slicing this piece of meat up into layers of five millimeters. Now I'm finally getting to unleash my anger towards the Austrians that have been fooling me all this time. Uh, yeah. And that's why I think about that. I'm tenderizing the meat while I'm bashing it. Of course, I don't want to destroy it, but I want to flatten it. And by flattening it, I'm also making it more and more tender. And of course, it's becoming larger at the same time. And bigger is better. Well, it's not really true, but most of the time, bigger is better. I think it's dead now. Look at this monster. Wow. Now that's what I call a schnitzel. Now I'm going to season my schnitzels with salt and pepper. And I'm going to do both sides. Even though they're really thin, I want to make sure I get enough flavor on them so they're also going to flavor the breading. Now it's time to start making the breading station and it always consists of three parts. The first one being flour. I'm using an all-purpose flour which is going to stick to our schnitzel and make a good base for our breading. The next step involves breaking some eggs. <laughs> first one, I'm going to beat the eggs with a whisk to break up the structure of the egg and make sure that it becomes one giant fluid. But you don't want to take it too far because what makes the schnitzel perfect are the imperfections. So I want to still have a little piece of egg white and little chunks of egg yolk in the mix. And the last part of the breading station might just be the most special part of the breading station because I'm going to use these Kaiser breads which are typical for Austria. And these are old and they're super super dry so they're from the day before yesterday and they're like i can't break them i'm a strong guy come on what's wrong here <laughs> incredibly tough but they're almost already like breadcrumbs so what are we gonna do make our own breadcrumbs look at that Ta-da! It's done, the breading station. I must admit, it's a little bit more work than why you, when you buy these things individually and it's already prepared, but we made it happen. It's here, it's done, and it took around five minutes, so don't, I shouldn't be complaining about it. I shouldn't even mention it, because it's so well worth it. And now the magic time is here, where we dip our beautiful pieces of meat in the breading station. But what do you do first, before you start doing it? Now it's time to fire up my Napoleon grill. We're gonna turn on the gas, light it up, and it's as easy as that. The infrared side burner has got a lot of power and it's gonna bring our pan up to temperature very easily. So I'm gonna load it up with clarified butter because this is my favorite choice. Over beef tallow, over pork fat, I love clarified butter and especially in schnitzels. 
Now I'm going to dip my schnitzel first in the flour, pat it off, dip it in the egg, let it drip off, and finally in the breadcrumbs that is going to make this the most beautiful crust on a schnitzel you've ever seen. And then it's time for a bath in the hot golden butter. Now we have all the characteristics of the perfect schnitzel. Of course we gotta have a side dish to go with our schnitzels, so I'm making a warm potato salad. By cutting up some of these miniature potatoes, putting them in a tray, adding olive oil, rosemary and sea salt. Put that in the oven for 30 minutes at a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius and then they look like this. Add a little bit of mayonnaise, now you have a tasty warm potato salad. We got the sliced veal flattened with your grandma's cast iron pan, seasoned with salt and peña pepper, dusted with flour, dipped in a slightly beaten egg, and oh yeah, freshly grated Kaiser bread breadcrumbs, fried up in a bowl of beautiful golden butter, and the end result looks like the sun on steroids. This is what perfection looks like. With a warm potato salad and a slice of lemon on the side, what a beauty. <laughs> like, oh man. This is like, wake me up. If you're making this and I'm sleeping, wake me up for this. This is like, seriously, get me out of bed. This is so amazing. You can do this too. If I can do it, you can do it. It's not that hard. You know, I might be playing it a little bit dangerous with a big pan with a little edge and like the stuff, but you know, just take some safety precautions. Mm. I'm back again, back in Germany, back, back to reality, driving through the hills, eight years old, no place to sleep because my parents were still driving, couldn't find a hotel. And then you finally see that spot, that, that spot of light in the distance and you need food. And then there, there you have it. You, have, you get this amazing platter of a big, big schnitzel. It's just that good. It is really freaking amazing. It is the butter. It is the whole crust on the outside. It's the thin sliced veal that has been bashed until it's tender. I can't believe how well it turned out. Normally I would have thought that we're like a little, little bit of flexing. But this is normal for a schnitzel, in my opinion. This is how a schnitzel should be. If a schnitzel is not big, I'm disappointed. Yeah. But I, I think it's really weird that that uh, you're talking about German schnitzel in your German experience. It's not, I know. But they sell, they sell schnitzels everywhere. They I sell mean, yeah. it in the Netherlands, they sell it in Germany, they sell it in Vienna, they sell it in, in Austria. There's only one place in the whole wide world where they are too small. And it's the Netherlands. And I don't know why, but... We just changed that. A lot of the time, this is like with winter sports, you get a warm potato salad. Mm. Basically, it's just potatoes and mayonnaise. But if you roast these little potatoes in the oven with a little bit of salt or rosemary, it's so amazing. I would be really, really happy with that on the plate. You gotta eat the whole thing, huh? Yeah, I know. Then I'm gonna make some room so you... Is this, am I far away enough so you can put something here? Yeah, probably. Which is gonna be? Which video is it gonna be? Click, 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 click. Mm. Check out the video. Mm. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, it's makkelijk and keep on grilling. Keep on grilling. <laughs>